All right, and so now we're in module 12. Um, in the assignment, that's not the assignment. <laughs> in the assignment, you will be at this part. We're going over what is the cerebral cortex and getting into some of the different parts. And then there is your summative assessment. So what is the cerebral cortex? Let's find out. The cerebral cortex is the body's ultimate control in information process, et cetera. It is where all the stuff is. It's where everything that's going on in our brain is happening here. The cerebral cortex is made up a lot of different areas. Um, so we have these things called association areas. We have different cortexes, and then we have the different lobes that all deal with different things. The frontal lobe um, deals with more complex processes. We have the parietal lobe, which helps um, with um, things more like kind of functioning um, and movement. We have our occipital lobe back here, which deals with um, deals with vision, lots of different things. So we're gonna get into though the different cortexes and what's going on in these different cortexes. So first we have the motor cortex, which makes sense that it helps with voluntary movement. And it's at the back of our frontal lobe. So the motor, motor cortex you can see is right here. And it deals with voluntary movement, meaning the movement that we're thinking about, which is why it's closer to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the most advanced one. So why that's why it's a little bit more further up here. It's something that's evolved over time. Um, so a fun fact about this is that stimulating parts of this region in the left or right hemisphere causes movements of specific body parts on opposite side of the body. So as um, if you watch the video in the previous one, the left controls the right side of our body and the right controls the left side of our body. Um, that's something that kind of seems crazy, but it's that's kind of how it works. So our brains are are divided into two sections and one side is is helping information on the other process and the other is doing the opposite. So that is kind of a fun fact about our brain. Um, the next we have is the somatosensory cortex. So this is at the front of the parietal lobes and it registers and processes body touch and movement sensation. So as I was saying, this has to do with movement, but also more of these um, just kind of sensations as well. So again, this is right behind here. It's the somatory, somatosensory, and it's by the parietal. And fun fact about this is the more sensitive the body region, the larger the somatosensory cortex area is devoted to it. Then we have the visual cortex, which makes sense. Um, and it's at the back of the occipital lobe and it receives input from our eyes. So I like to think, so occipital lobe deals with vision, right? That's where the visual cortex is. Um, I, I always think like the optometrist, ophthalmology, those all, the O, anytime you see that, it usually deals with like, um, with your vision. And then we have these cool things called association areas. These were not involved in primary motor or sensory functions like, like the occipital lobe and the sensory um, different cortexes, but they are helped with higher mental functions like learning, remembering, thinking, speaking. And the more associations areas or the larger ones that you have, um, tends to mean that you are a more advanced species. So a fun fact is more intelligent animals have increased uncommitted or association areas of the cortex. So for example, a human, as you can see, has the, the pink as association areas. We have a lot. We are considered a more evolved and advanced species. We're able to do things like feel and remember and speak. A chimpanzee, our close relative, um, also has quite a few, but isn't as advanced as us, has a little bit smaller. Then we have a cat, doesn't have as much, and then we have a rat, barely has any, right? So the brain has all these different parts, a million different things going on, and everything has its own particular way of helping us. Some things help with vision, some help with taste, some help with sense, other sensations like touch. 
Some things are helping us remember. Some things are helping us feel. It is incredible and does a lot of different things. And it's when one of these things is damaged, it can have a real huge impact on us. So there's a video here, um, and it's about this guy named Phineas Gage. You're going to want to watch this because it's pretty interesting. It's about this man who he was a railroad railroad worker back in like the 1800s, I think. I think it was 1800s, maybe early 1900s. But um, he was a railroad worker and a metal bar, metal rod, like went through his face, goes through his eye and into his brain. And it punctured part of his brain. And it had a huge impact on him. And it's really fascinating. Um, so definitely watch this video to understand how important it is that these different parts of the brain and how it impacts you, um, where you can still function fully if a certain part of your brain is damaged, but it does change you. So take a watch, um, watch this video. The last part of this week's assignments, so that's it for that lecture, is the summative assessment. You're just answering two short answer questions, and then there's a couple multiple choice questions, and that's it. Um, I know it's a little bit longer. Uh, module 11 had a lot of notes, but um, make sure you're watching the videos. Again, they're interesting videos this week, so definitely take a watch.